Welcome everyone, it's Ronnie here from PLR.me. We are going to have a lot of fun today. Um, we're going to be talking about DJs and grannies and we're also joined by PLR.me member, all around all-star and awesome person, Jamie Lee. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's such a huge pleasure to be here. I've been so excited. I told my husband it's going to be a party on Facebook today. <laughs> <laughs> with you Ronnie and we're talking about PLR and it's gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna be so we have a really kind of fun agenda I'll kind of summarize it um so so Jamie does some really cool creative stuff and I'm gonna let her talk about that in just a second but one of the things that she approached me with was that she's she kind of likened PLR to a DJ spinning music, which I had never thought of. And I'm very curious what that means. And also Granny's sewing patterns, which I'm also very equally confused and excited to hear what that means. Um, and then we're also gonna talk about the stigma of using pre-made content. Uh, Jamie is a blogger and she's she's uh, doing amazing things with video, with a text, but there's also this sort of like, you know, hey, should I use someone else's content? Like, how does that all work? So we're gonna talk about that. And then the third thing, and that, this is the biggie, we're gonna talk about the three tiers of content. And uh, Jamie has a really cool formula for this that is gonna help you grow your blog and help you build out funnels and just do some awesome stuff using the PLR.me content. So I'm pumped, let's dive right in. Uh, Jamie, you tell us a little bit about what you do um, who you are and uh, your business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, awesome introduction there. I'm so excited to talk about all of this. we got to tie it all together. Um, but yeah, I've been working from home since 2009. I feel super fortunate. Um, I say rocking my business while rocking my babies because I have a, <laughs> a five-year-old and, five and, and they're actually downstairs right now watching TV. That's how it's always roll, right? Um, Parenting win. They're quiet. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet and happy and life is good. Um, and yeah, so I've been working from home since 2009, as you said. I've I've gotten into some blogging. I do a little bit of coaching. I've been in network marketing, graphic design, video, video editing. So I've wow. like been, you know, doing a lot of different stuff. Before 2009, I was in marketing and communications for 15 plus years, and that's really where I got a bulk of the experience to then launch out and do my own thing. Um, starting in 2009. And so it's it's been a really great ride, learned a lot of great stuff. And I think that's where, you know, through creating so much, um, so many different graphics and, and content and writing and videos over the years, I can really appreciate what is here in PLR. And I got to tell you, I mean, you know, I've been like through the roof excited since finding this. <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, so why don't you talk a little bit about how um, how you used to create content before discovering us and what you did, uh, how you just what that all looked like. Yeah, absolutely. So I've had the pleasure of creating content for a lot of different platforms. I've created content for coaching courses. I've done, you know, I created my own branding course. I've helped with a couple other people's courses. I've done blogging content. I've created content for video through um, whether it be I did some branding video as well as, believe it or not, news content. Um, nice. So, yeah, so it, I've. I've created all kinds of content. And usually in the beginning, first you have to come up with your idea, right? Like what the heck are you going to talk about that even interests your target audience? Because that's like the main thing you have usually, whether you're online or doing coaching or you're creating a news content, you have mere seconds to catch someone's attention. So really what you're going to talk about is quite a big deal, right? And then after you figure that out, you need to gather all the resources together, do your research, talk with people or however you're gathering that information, and then somehow put it together in a really nice package and format. And so, you know, creating content over the years, it would take a really long time to kind of go through that process and get that all done. And, um, you know, you get faster as time goes on, but but it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So. Totally now not. enter PLR.me. What what's what have you done with the content so far? Yeah, so with PLRme, it's PLR.me. It's so much easier because, like, literally, sometimes if I don't have an idea, I will just literally scroll through the content 
I'd be like, well, that's a great idea. And that's a great idea. And, oh, I could take this and like mirror it up and package it with this. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the tiered content. But, you know, so, so starting out, just looking at PLR.me, there's so much just uh, idea generation and um, coming coming from what's already in there. And then pulling stuff out and actually opening it up and using it and either using it as is or more than likely using it and changing it, creating it into right. some type of package or content and kind of weaving pieces together, which again, we'll talk about. Um, but it just, I feel like it honestly just really simplifies that process of, again, finding what you're going to talk about and then breaking it down and putting it together and packaging it up, whether you're doing coaching or you're doing blogging or you're doing, you know, whatever else you're doing, um, mm -hmm. makes it so much easier, I feel, to get that done. Totally. It, it is. It's a huge time saver. We, we hear that from people all the time. Um, and now I, I just kind of have to ask you point blank. Tell me about this DJ grandma sewing pattern thing, because I'm really curious. I didn't get a preview of this, so I have no idea what you're about to say, but I, it sounds awesome. So go ahead. <laughs> I will. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, you know, in talking with a few friends, it's like one of the things that comes up is like, um, because first of all, let me back up for a second. I'm like shouting from the rooftops how much fun this is. These PLR <laughs> So, awesome. uh, yeah, so like in talking with people, they're like, well, wait a minute, how does that work? Because aren't you just taking, you know, somebody else's content and then putting it up on your blog? I'm primarily using it for my blog. And so for me, I got to say, like, I really think of it like a, a DJ spinning music. I mean, how many of you, I'm just curious, I can't really see the comments right now, but I'll see them later. I'm curious how many of you are like um, 70s or 80s babies. And so you understand like what a DJ does, right? They, they get the music and they kind of like, like mix it up, right? And they, <laughs> they, right? Started, like, who knows the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right? Hit the first people. I watched a rockumentary like two weeks ago, and this is how I thought of this. Um, but awesome. you know, he was like one of the first people I think to kind of take stuff and break it up and pull things here. And there. he probably wasn't one of the first. I'm probably remembering wrong. But as I say it out loud, that really doesn't sound right. But anyway, but like DJs will take, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> They'll take these the music and and they'll yeah. it up and they kind of interweave it and they make it their own and and I really feel like with content it's it's really the same thing like what they said in this documentary it was really cool they said you know all music is really just formed from all the same notes right and I feel like exactly yep it, and it's kind of the same thing right we're just mm -hmm. reformulating it and putting our own spin on it because we are all our unique individual right and that's what right. we coming to us for right totally so so yeah sorry so a couple of th things about that so first of all i, I i'm in big in music as well and if you're at all curious about um like the format of songs there's there's something called i think it's like the four chord song and if you look this up on youtube there's this group that does like i don't know like 80 songs all with the exact same chord progression like it's literally the same thing they're just changing the words slightly you know slightly changing timing whatever stuff like that but it's the same chord progressions and we still listen to the music and we still li like the music and these are like like hugely popular songs that all use the same four chords so it's funny that you said that because i never even made that connection before and then the other thing i wanted to say the second thing was oftentimes the dj or the remix can be even more popular than the original and you can probably think of some, some uh, or covers can be more popular than the original. This is often the case. And that's kind of the, the beauty of this. When we make this sort of this parallel, we realize, oh yeah, you know what? It's totally cool to use something, make it your own, remix it, make it you, inject your stories, your case studies, your examples, your voice, and then transform the world using that content. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And I'm looking up that four chord, by the way. It's crazy. Cool. It's crazy how, and that's the thing, like, that's a music thing. There's, there's licensing and, and, you know, repurposing in physical products, like, you know, go to Walmart, Costco, wherever. Then there's licensing in terms of content. And that's what we do. And that's what saves you so much time. So I just wanted to point that out. It's everywhere. I didn't even make that connection. It's in music too. It's kind of cool. It is. It totally is. And you know, it's that it's your own unique, your your vision of things is totally unique. And so when you open up that content that PLR has created and you're looking at it and you're analyzing it and you're breaking it apart and putting it together, you're going to 
put it together completely different than the person next to you will, right? Mm -hmm. Just like the two different DJs or musicians putting together that music. And so, um, yeah, I think that's so cool. I think it's really cool. Totally. Um, okay. Um, hold on now. Uh, Granny's sewing patterns. Oh, hold on. I'm, this one, I'm like, this is out there. So I'll let you explain before I judge. <laughs> This one is, yeah, you know, it's like, okay, so I'll just start from the beginning. When I was younger, when I was growing up, my grandma was amazing at sewing, right? She would make us these dresses and like jumpsuits and even swimsuits. Wow, and, cool. Oh my goodness. She was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And um, it's like she, when she would put them together, I remember as a child just being so amazed that she could do this. Like the patterns were so beautiful and what she chose was so beautiful. But at the heart of it, she wasn't reinventing like the skeleton of it. I don't know how many how many of you sew out there or put things together. I cannot do it, but I've experienced it through her. And right. what you do is, you know, go to the store and you would get you pick out maybe it's different now, but you would pick out the paper pattern. So let's say it was swimsuit, you pick out the pattern where you would cut for the pieces of the swimsuit, right? Mm -hmm. And then that was her face or her foundation, and then she put her own spin on it to make it unique to make it her own and so I just through thinking of that it made me think well that's kind of what we do with the content as well right like plr.me gives us that foundation it gives us the form it gives us the, us the skeleton and then we can really play with it and we can really spice it up jazz it up change it recompile it to make it our own right awesome so awesome our now I get it hey so I there's no judgment that totally makes sense it's like a template right you use it as a foundation you can choose your own colors, your styles, your fabrics, just like in the sewing pattern um, sort of niche there. It's, whole, it's the same kind of thing with content. It's super cool. Uh, I wanted to read out a couple of comments. So Percy said, country music wouldn't exist without the four chords. And isn't that fascinating? Like a whole genre is built on essentially having the exact same pattern, you know, this four chord structure that's used over and over and over again. And again, change it up, make it your own. You add your own voice, style, words, examples. That's how you can use it, the, the done for you PLR.me content as well. So yeah. super cool. Keep the, keep the comments coming. We're going to get into some more cool stuff. Um, but first I want to ask you about this sort of stigma because this is a common thing like, Oh, well, I'm using someone else's words. And if all of that, that we just talked about, didn't help to, um, you know, ease some of those concerns. Well, I want you to talk about it as a blogger, as someone who writes, right? So you write, you're, you're, you're excellent at writing. Um, now you're at this stage of, okay, well, I, you know, let me use PLR, not make content. So I want to take us through that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the stigma of using somebody else's content, I think, I think in, I think, first of all, I think it's very common. I think it's very common for us to, to feel as though we are taking somebody else's words or somebody else's content and like we have to do the hard work and like dig in and, you know, really um, invest a lot in blood, sweat and tears to make it our own and to make it something of value. And I feel like it doesn't, that, that's not necessarily the case, right? And PLR makes it so much simpler. And, and so I think sometimes we think it has to be harder than it needs to be, or at least I am guilty of that. And mm -hmm. I think maybe some some of you joining us are maybe guilty of that. So I, so I think that's one part of it, right? Like we have to invest blood, sweat, and tears in order in order to make it something of value. But I think um, the other part of it is, like you had mentioned, like using using content that's already done. And I think from my background and, and where I come from, I think I have kind of a different perspective on it. So. I had mentioned that I've been in communications or I was in communications for 15 years before branching out on my own in 2009, mm -hmm. my own thing. Part of that journey through the 15 years of communications was writing news content. So I was a producer and a writer. And one of the very first things that we do is you go out to what's called the AP wire. You've got right. Associated Press, right? You're familiar with this. And yeah. You see what's going on. You grab their news items, you bring them in, and you rewrite them. Right. And so, I mean, that's one of the the biggest um, industries in in our country and the world is our news, right? And so, so I think I have kind of a different perspective on it. Seeing that um, happen every day, bringing in that news content and rewriting it, I got kind of a different perspective on 
repurposing content. Right. I want to, I want to, so first off, <laughs> another fantastic example. It's just a perfect example because again, we forget that the news, like, like let's put it in realistic, like logistical terms. How could a small broadcaster in Nebraska have a worldwide like league of journalists covering every single news story internationally it would be impossible right even even a big city couldn't have a journalist in every single city in the world but that's what the newswire is ap reuters and and like there's like a, what a dozen or a couple of dozen newswires around the world that does have people all over and they do the hard writing and and research and they're there on the ground and then that gets licensed to the broadcasters, the radio, TV, print. Mm -hmm. They rewrite, they, you know, create news stories about it. Hey, and if it's a really big breaking story, yeah, maybe the big networks would send a, a crew there. But you can't do that for every single piece of content, for every single piece of news. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So so I kind of look at that as it's very similar, you know, PLR.me, you're just kind of being that reporter in a way if you want to have a visualization but you know you're you're just you're pulling that content and again you're you're rewriting it and recreating it and just making it your own or or getting ideas from it you know I don't know how many times I've gone into plr.me and just reading through some of the stuff I'm like well that's amazing not only am I am I able to take this piece of content and you know use what's here but I'll often get ideas to like break out different stories and articles from it so right yeah right Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna let you take take charge now. And it, what do you want to talk about next? Want to go to the three tiers, or is there something I'm missing so far? Yeah, I would love to talk about the three tiers. I think All right. it's a great thing. Let's let's do it. So let's get into it. Th three tiers. Let's have a simple content strategy for your blog for creating funnels, and how you can do this all using the the PLR.me content. So th the show is yours. <laughs> All right, I will do my best. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the three tiers of content, this is something I learned a little while ago and I, I feel like it can be used for blogging, it can be used for coaching, it can be used for a lot of different things. And so I'm doing primarily blogging right now, so I'm gonna talk about blogging, but just know it can also branch out for coaching. I'm gonna touch upon that too. Sure. Cool? Okay. Yep, sounds good. Okay. So if you think of how, if you think of a tree, if you can visualize a tree, a tree has its main trunk and it goes up and it, it branches out, right? And if you look mm -hmm. at the branches, it's got, it's kind of like um, secondary branches or first level branches, I guess. Okay. Sure, yeah. Branches, right? Okay. So yeah. the three tiers of content, I want you to think of the trunk as tier one. And then the, the next thicker branches is tier two. And then the really thin branches is tier three. And so as, as you're writing content and you're gathering content, tier one is going to be like in terms of blogging, those are going to be like the really big articles, right? They're going to be like the 1500 plus word articles that are going to have lots of keywords in them. They're going to have lots of great content and they're going to link out to all of your tier two and three articles. Tier two articles will be like about 700 words. And then tier three would be like 300 to 500, like really small, right? And so yeah. what you're doing, and Ronnie, I know you're amazing at this too with the SEO. It's so like to hear more from your perspective too. But so what you're doing is you're you're creating lots of pages with your tier yeah. three content, right? And your tier yeah. two content. And then that tier one is really like the meat and potatoes, right? Your tier one is exactly. like people in. So that's the hub. Exactly. The tier one, you know, you can think of it as you know, the epic post, like it is the definitive article about a spe very specific topic. It's, you know, it's a long form post, you'd inject lots of, you know, images, headlines, bullets, like make it super readable, exciting, like just the best of the, the best in that topic. And that's like the cornerstone. That's where everything else sort of revolves around. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like with PLR.me, it makes it pretty simple to do that because you can either you can go out and you can take some of the, you know, like the, the slideshows, you can take some of the, even the right. courses, I won't say courses, but I'm going to get into that in a second. But you can take <laughs> content, and if you're doing a blog, you can either use that as is, you can repurpose it, or you can gather a lot of smaller articles together and make right. that one. And then I feel like it's just so much easier. 
it, it, it's a ton easier because then you can take multiples potentially like related or or semi-related topics stitch them together you mm -hmm. know almost like chapters in a book but that becomes instead of a book it becomes an epic post that has again all the, the resources ideas exercises examples stories that you inject into it and this is the key make it your own so if an article is all about confidence well you know maybe your target audience is you know uh, confidence and women who are um like you know in their in their 40s and 50s who are trying to you know grow in their career so you've got all these sort of like big hub of keywords there's women career um you know career advancement goal setting confidence self-esteem you have all these like hubs and spokes that come out of all of those related keywords and then you put that all into that epic post stitching together potentially unrelated articles about confidence about career advancement about so on like you can kind of grab and pick ideas from different resources mash it all together and then add your stories add your examples add your your you know your personality make it you and that's the key thing that's what's going to make this awesome yeah absolutely i love that you said adding in your stories and examples because we keep talking about making it your own and but mm -hmm. we haven't really said how you do that and so i love that right. you the stories and examples, especially those stories, those are what's going to allow you to shine, whether you're doing the blogging or the coaching. So yeah, super cool. Totally um, awesome. Yeah. And I feel like that, that tier three, the three tier content can work for coaches as well, because your tier one, your your main trunk would just be your, your course, right? Whatever course you're offering. And then you yep. branch out tier two and tier three smaller stuff which would be like your emails that you're sending out you can use the content funnels like i think that's the, that's one of the things that's great about the plr.me is that you can use it so many different ways so you can take the articles you know chunk them together in an email series that will then promote your course which there are so many great courses in plr.me so it's pretty pretty versatile that way awesome awesome and it's a it's a great way to have a, a tangible strategy of the different types of content, right? So there's there's the the big hub, the meat and potatoes, but then there's other stuff that you could use our free coaching magazine template, for example, to send out you know, newsletters or get those magazines onto SlideShare and share that on on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, on, in your emails. Yeah. That's one side of it. But then there's also, hey, the video side. And I actually want to talk to you about that because I spent a while watching some of your YouTube videos, your um, your Facebook live streams, and you're awesome. Like there, there's a certain type of energy and interaction and just like cool factor to your videos. And I mean, I know I know a lot of it would be content that, that you come up with yourself, but how could you use the PLR.me content in your awesome videos and live streams? Yeah, that's a great question. And first of all, thank you. I feel the exact same <laughs> you. I was watching your videos and like, amazing just your energy and your confidence and what you share so i appreciate that that means a lot coming from you <laughs> you're um, awesome I'm, I'm this is why it's such a it's such a fun interview to to talk like it's just we can match the energy which is kind of cool so go ahead <laughs> um and yeah you know i think the plr.me content is so great for videos because you can literally take an article read through it and then what you're going to talk about like for me when i do the videos i like to instead of um, writing out exactly what I'm going to say, and I think you're the same way, instead of writing it out, I just have the main bullets, right? Yep. And so I think that's where PLR.me con content becomes. Oh, did I lose you? Uh, folks, if you can still hear me, just give me a quick comment. I'm not sure if it's my connection or if it's Jamie's. Um, let me see here. Oh, can you guys hear me? Just leave a quick comment if you can hear me. Okay, so it's, uh, okay, Jamie's frozen. Okay, so um, we'll make, we'll get her back. Um, maybe it's her net connection. Um, all right. So what I wanted to talk about, cause there was a really good question in here and I'll, I'll answer this. This is from Cynthia. Um, while Jamie comes back, the, 
She says, I run a digital marketing agency, but would love to incorporate self-development. How would that work with PLR? So fantastic question. In fact, just in um, a, a support question came in today about, um, I am in charge of content marketing for an organic tea company. How could I use PLR.me? And that, that's a that's a serious question. And it's an awesome question. I'm gonna share both examples because I think that um, it will be very helpful to see how you can take a concept that might be unrelated and then relate it and use the PLR.me content for that. So for example, in the case of digital um, marketing agency and self-development, um, so Cynthia, if you can leave in the comments, just some of the types of things, some of the products or services or training that you offer to your clients. And I'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, but in terms of self-development, we have to think about, well, what are people struggling with? And I'm going to have Jamie join back here. One second. I see her coming here. Um, hey, Jamie, wait, I... I can hear you. So I'm answering. So no worries. I'm going to answer a question that I promised uh, from Cynthia, and then we'll we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, so she's asking about. She runs a digital marketing agency. She would love to incorporate self development in that. So how would that work with PLR? And I was. I, I'll. Um, so she she answered here. She has. She also has confidence coaching and goal setting and so on. So. In digital marketing, again, I'm I'm assuming. Do you offer digital marketing services, Cynthia? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by digital marketing agency. Um, so if, if you can answer that, but there are ways of relating things that are unrelated. So in the example of uh, organic tea, so we got a question about organic tea and how could we use the PLR to make content for um, content marketing for this organic tea company? And the, uh, my answer was kind of unusual perhaps, but when you sell organic tea, you're selling not just a physical thing, you're not just selling tea. Um, so in, in terms of the, the, the example of tea and this lifestyle and this experience, you can also share articles about just general health, wellness and lifestyle relating to organic, um, organic living or um, uh, you know, just general wellness, not just tea, but also, hey, what are, what are some great morning routines that you can use to start your day? Or how could you wind down in the evening so that you can get a good night's sleep? Those are all things that are relevant for people who drink tea too. It's not just, all I could only talk about is tea, 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 tea. No, you're, you're, that's not you, right? It doesn't have to be that. You can actually talk about other related topics to that. Tea is about lifestyle, it's about experience, it's about um, uh, you know healthy living, food, nutrition, enjoyment, you know, what you can also think about what, where do people drink tea? What do people do when they're drinking tea? You know, and those are the kinds of things that you can, um, you can, you can share in that campaign. So in, in the example of Cynthia, she offers digital marketing for, um, for local and online businesses, kitchen remodeling, uh, companies, roofers, and so on. So in that case, um, hmm, I'm trying to think here, what would be related? So you're selling to these different companies. Um, so they could be in any niche, usually a physical brick and mortar type of business. So I would, I would say, you know, like they're, they're struggling, they're struggling with, um, confidently projecting themselves on in, in their marketing, their videos, their, I can't, I'm not sure if, are you talking at all, Jamie? Cause I, I don't have any audio from you. I don't know if I could. I mean, okay. I my sound would come on. Okay. Yes. The sound is good. So I do hear you. So you're back. So that's good. <laughs> um, but you know, like they might be struggling with confidence when it comes to themselves and their marketing. They may also need help with, um, just how they could be creative. So there's some creativity content that you might inject in their creative in their marketing, creative in their emails, how to talk, uh, to, to customers, customer service related things. And again, self-development is much deeper, um, so, I mean, it's a, so you might have some other ideas as well, Jamie, or folks, if you have any comments or ideas of how you can interlink self-development, personal growth, self-help with, you know, brick and mortar businesses, please feel free to, to, uh, to comment in the comments, but go ahead, Jamie, if you have any ideas. Oh yeah. I think that's great. What you're saying, Ronnie, that's exactly what I would say. It's just kind of interweaving that. And it's really all about attraction marketing, right? Like getting into right. the head of the person that you are targeting your demographic, your avatar, whatever you want to call it getting into their head, figuring out what their problems are, 
And whether it be directly to your product or service or indirectly, like what Ronnie said, you know, whether it be directly to mm-hmm. you or whether it be indirectly, some of the other lifestyle issues they have, figuring that out and then providing that solution. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. We've had another example, again, completely unrelated. It sounds like um, there was a, a Japanese like men's clothing store that was asking, hey, like, do you have any like men's fashion content? And well, no, we don't. We, that's not our specialty. But what do people struggle with when it comes to dressing themselves? And, and you know, if you're, if you're selling high quality suits and, you know, nice clothing, well, it could be relating to how to dress to impress on a first date, in a in an interview, how to um, you know just look good in and so you feel more confident and uh, self esteem and so it's all related. I mean, clothing is related to how you feel. It's related to opportunities that you have and in your career, in your family life, and so on. We have to start thinking out of that box. I totally agree. I like to say you sell the destination, not the airplane. So like when you go on vacation, what do you most remember about going on vacation? Do you remember the airplane that you went in or do you remember the experience that you had? And it's the same thing. Do you necessarily remember that suit or do you remember how that suit or ladies, that dress or outfit, how that made you feel the confidence? Right. right? So yeah, for sure. Exactly. And that's a funny thing is like, you know, do you sell when it comes to physical objects too? It's easy to think, well, you know, you get a hammer so that, well, why do you get a hammer? Well, so it's, you can hit a nail. Well, no, it's so you can actually like put stuff together, right? Like that's the end goal. And that's how we have to think. It's not just, you know, accomplishing something as physical as putting a nail through some wood. It's okay. Well, what is that going to do? Like, you don't just put nails in wood for no reason. Like there's a reason for that. You put it together. Maybe you're making a bed. Maybe you're, it, it, whatever you're doing, like there's, there's always the end goal in mind. So I love that example of the airplane. Um, it's so true. I mean, we, we have to sell the destination Yeah. and um, I'm going to let you, we're going to get one more question in and then you're going to continue. Uh, Audrey says, I'm interested in teaching a class about living a life on purpose. Mm. So fantastic. So first off, um, we have a course on that, that you can easily take and make it your own which is called the Becoming Your Beautiful Authentic Self course. And it's really about finding your life purpose. It's really about confidence. It's about becoming who you are and who you're meant to be. And you can very easily take the content, add your stories, present it live, record face-to-face video, or however way you'd like to do it. But you can take it and then just, you know, make it relevant to your audience. So if it's about living a life on purpose, well, it's, First, it starts with living an authentic life. You know, who, what is what is your life look like? What is it? What is what is that purpose for you in your life? You can take the course and um, make that your own. And I'll what I'll do actually, I'll um, show you how to find that course real quick. So let me try to make this bigger. Whoop! How do I do this? Okay, it's not. Wow, that's this is neat. All the different grids. Okay, well that's that's what I'm gonna have. I will actually let me do a solo so that that way it's a little bit bigger to see. So first off, when you go to PLR.me, you can go to products and you can see the different um, the new products, popular products, popular categories. And I'm gonna go here to view all categories just to show you here, and you can see all the different categories, and then scroll down, you'll see all the different product types. So in this case, I'm looking for the course. I'm just going to click on course, and then you'll see the courses that are available. And here is the Becoming Your Beautiful Authentic Self. So you can click on that. Uh, There is a bundle as well, and you can just, I'd always tell people because in case you want the whole bundle, you will save. um, So you can see more about that in here. But you get everything. You get the full course. What's that? Sorry? I was just going to say how much I love the bundles. (laughs) Yes. Oh, it's huge. It's a, it's it's a huge time time saver, money saver. You get everything all at once. And this course, the bundle comes with, and let me go to it just so you can see. Um, the, the course comes with Facebook ads, landing page, sales page, um, the slides for each uh, lesson in the course. There's like 48 or 49 lessons. And then there's the lead, landing, uh, a lead magnet, video sales letter, 
uh, there's even a video version that we recorded. We had a, a voiceover artist record each lesson. So you can have that if you'd like, if you don't want to use your own voice. So it's a huge, huge, uh, uh, time saver because you don't have to create all that from scratch, but then you can take that and make it your own relating to life purpose. So I just wanted to point that out. You can, and you can see a sample of that. You'll see what the, the course modules are all about, accepting yourself, love who you are, determining your ah, life purpose and uh, living authentically. So really cool content in there. You can take a look at that. So let me go back to us. Cynthia said, wow, which is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, isn't that cool? Like we have so much content and it's easy to get lost in it because we're, we're, there's tens of, there's tens of thousands of resources. You know, how do you find all the stuff? Use, use a search bar, you know, type in life purpose, look through categories and you'll, you'll love it. I think there's a lot of great stuff in there. Yeah. And I love that we're having this conversation too, because I think so many of us creative people that, you know, love to do content, we learn a lot more when we're having conversations like this, right. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I can do that. Or that, wow, that was in there. And so that's so cool that you were able to bring that up and, and show that. And yeah. Yeah, like it as well. <laughs> it is cool. Yeah, totally. Um, Cynthia said, is it cloud-based once we buy? Um, if I understand the question correctly, uh, you can re-download it at any time. There's no additional charge to re-download it. If you run out of credits or you cancel at any point in time, you can still re-download it. It's yours to use. So if that's what you mean by cloud-based, yes. Um, and then you can you download the content to your computer. You can copy and paste it into uh, Udemy or Teachable or your own WordPress site, present it in video format. You can do whatever you'd like with it, but the content would then be yours too make your own. You have this cool like lens flare glow on you. I don't know if you can tell oh, in your video. I am it's, under a skylight. <laughs> and so That is so cool. It's like, wow, it's like oh. the heavens are watching. This is pretty neat. <laughs> it's awesome. And like it's coming from each side. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, I'm, I've never seen that before. I'm like, did you, is that a filter? Is that some kind of cool Facebook live filter? No, that's really cool. Right like it but no <laughs> awesome uh, okay so let's go back to to what you were talking about before the whole tech stuff happened uh go ahead if you <laughs> i honestly was hoping you were gonna remember um i put no I, about that um i don't know if folks remember if not we're just gonna like just have fun i know that <laughs> well we're talking about the, the tiers of content we're talking about how you can use the courses, especially as a coach, you can use the courses as the big hub and um, other types of formats like emails and videos. Oh, and we're talking about how you can use the videos. I think that's where we la left off. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so and how I think you were saying you use bullet points and then you can take that and just sort of make that into your own. So you take some, some yeah. of the content, you extract the bullet points. Actually, you could even use the PLR.me tool content summarizer, which extracts the bullet points of articles and books for you. Have you seen that before? I can't use that. That is so yeah. cheap. <laughs> what? Okay. Yes. Do I need to do a demo? Right? I need to do this. <laughs> really, I need that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do this. So what, what I'm going to do before I, uh, let me just grab, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this live. It's actually really cool. Really cool way of using the material. So let me, make this go to the broadcast and we should be, yeah, okay. So you can see my screen. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for something. Let's say, I don't know, I'm just gonna look at confidence and what I'm gonna do is look for an article. So let's say you're gonna be talking about, um, you're, you have a live stream coming up or a webinar or something and hey, seven steps to social confidence. Like this, this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just click download. So now I've got the download. Next step, I'm gonna to go to the tools, gonna to go to the content summarizer. This is a members only tool. So if you're not a member, why? You need to be a member. This stuff is amazing. You gotta check out these tools. They're super cool. So I'm gonna open up the, just the text version of this. And I'm gonna paste it in to the content summarizer. So that's all I'm doing. I downloaded it. I pasted it into the content summarizer. I'm not even gonna change any of the settings. I'm just gonna click summarize. I now have, here's six bullet points 
of for, like uh, summarizing that article. Now I could I could change it up. I can adjust the settings. There's some training videos you can watch to see how to use that. But I can take that now and that becomes sort of the framework of presentations, live streams, videos, whatever. Um, that's it. That's how easy that was. I don't know if like that was, yeah, that was so, so fast that it's almost like you can't even see how I did that. But uh, it's just copying and pasting into here and hitting summarize. You now have the the summary, and you can click on show sentences. It'll show the actual sentences that um, that some of the material came from. The best sentences. There's lots of advanced ways of using this, um, but that's a really simple way of using the done for you content with the content summarizer tool as part of the PLR.me membership. That is so cool. I had that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? It's, it's there's so many cool ways of using the materials that um, you know, and that's we just need to just we just need to show more, right? So we need to do more videos, we're gonna do more training for you. If there's any particular things that you're struggling with, please let us know so we can create that for you. But that's one simple way of, hey, let's just get the bullet points. Imagine not having, like you're, you're crunched for time. You wanna summarize this report, copy and paste the whole report into, like it could be a 70 page report, copy and paste it into the content summarizer. You get the bullet points. You can now just easily summarize that, write about it, record about, like, like record a video about it, do a live stream about it, whatever. Absolutely. And I think, you know, video is such an amazing way to be a, a attract, you know, using for attraction marketing and attracting people to you and like, oh my goodness, you could just put together your, your video content for several weeks in like, you know, a few minutes. So that's really cool. Really cool. Totally. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, so what, so yeah, let's talk now about, so how do you use these three tiers? Like how do you promote it or how do you share it with the world? Like what do you do to kind of get the word out there? As far as the, the content when I create it, how do I? Yeah, exactly. So I do a few different things. Um, I use social media a lot. Like you said, I mm -hmm. love doing Facebook Live video. And so yeah. um, what I'll often do, I've got two different blogs. And I've done this for one blog, not the other blog yet. But what I like to do is on Facebook, I like to do Facebook Live videos. Because mm -hmm. Facebook Live videos get such a farther reach than just doing like a post or right. um, or simple text or sharing video from some, some other place. When you create your own original video content, um, that is so big. And you can drive traffic to your blog. You can drive traffic to your course. Um, you can really do it anywhere. So Facebook's the main form of advertising that I do. Um, a lot of people will like to use Facebook business pages. I like to use a personal page, even though we're not supposed to. <laughs> I still use it. <laughs> I use a business page, too. But sure. um, yeah, so what I'll do, how I do that then, how I decide what to do in the video is just take that tier one content and kind of pull out different chunks. And now I'm going to use the summarizer tool because it's way easier. But <laughs> I'll take out little little chunks, little keynotes to it. I won't give away everything. And on the video, I'll do a call to action at the end, which usually is to go check out the post or to join my Facebook group, which right. also has content in there. Is that is that right. kind of? Is yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and you, you know, the thing is, so true. when we take um, when we take the content and present it in a video format, especially in a live format, so it's not as formal, yeah. people just really get to know you so much better and faster than anything else that you can do. And I mean, I, I got that same sense when uh, honestly watching just one or two of your live streams, it's like, I instantly get who Jamie is. Like you get her personality, you get her style, how she talks, like you get the whole package in that format. And so I really encourage all of you that if you haven't done a live stream, do it. If you're uncomfortable with it, do it anyway. And just, it's a, just a matter of uh, getting out there. You can use the content as the foundation. You talk, you make it your own but there's just nothing else out there that's going to match other than maybe face to face that's yeah. going to match that um, just that enthusiasm that excitement that people will have when they watch your live stream and then say yeah I really totally like this person I want to work with them because without that it's just, it can just be sort of a sterile website that people often have maybe there's a, a still picture of them maybe not 
maybe there's not even an email address. It's just a contact form. Like, why would somebody want to work with with someone who they can't get to know? They don't know what they look like. They don't know what they sound like. You know, you have to be personable, be presentable, be you, and you can do that using videos. The best part is you don't have to even create the content. Like, all of that stuff can be done for you. That's where the PLR.me content comes in, but you just present as your own. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I feel like, I mean, you're so, you're so right. That's a super simple way for people to get to know you. I felt the same way watching your videos. It's like, oh, I totally know this guy, right? Like, <laughs> you just, you feel that way. It, it sounds totally. cool because you haven't actually met the person, but, but you do. I mean, think of like watching even TV shows, like your favorite TV show right now. Oh, yeah. It's so big to, you know, binge on Netflix shows and stuff. And you really feel like you get to know that cast of characters. And how many of you have done that? How many of you have? binged on Netflix and at the end of the show you're like oh gosh you're kind of sad because you don't get to watch yeah. anymore. Like, you kind of know well, what if you didn't see that actor or actress in person like you feel like you know them exactly right? yeah and so it's the same thing when people are watching your Facebook live videos and what I love about having content pre-done for you is that one of the biggest hurdles for anyone to get started in Facebook live videos and if you're joining us let us know if this is you but right. one of the biggest hurdles can be um, just getting the confidence to do it, right? Getting the confidence yes. to turn on that camera, getting the confidence to actually speak and to, to put yourself out there. And so what I love is that with PLR.me, the content is done. You don't have to worry about that component. You just get to focus on yourself and practicing and going live as often as you can. Exactly. And maybe, Jamie, maybe we should actually do, if there's enough interest, a, like a live stream challenge. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be really fun. I don't know if there's interest in that, please leave a comment below or up to the right or wherever you were, wherever you can comment on Facebook. So there's a couple of awesome things I want to, or some question and some great comments. Uh, so Cynthia says, no like and trust is a big a factor with live video. So it's so true. Um, and then John had the question, how long are your videos? So Jamie, how long are your live streams typically? Yeah, I used to do longer format videos and then I realized that when I could keep them 10 minutes or less, people actually tuned in more because we're also, yep. right? And so I like to say my videos are brief, bright, and out of sight. So I deliver actionable mm -hmm. items that people can put into place every day. So mine are 10 minutes or less. Awesome. Um, Linda has a question. So I'm going to ask the question and then I'm going to wait for her reply before we answer. But she says, I'm having trouble relating the content to my niche. Uh, so I could create videos. And she says yes to the challenge. So that's cool. So Linda, can you tell us a little bit about your niche? Um, and then we'll see how we can brainstorm and come up with ways of connecting the content to your niche. So go ahead and answer that in the comments. Cynthia also said live stream challenge would be cool. I think we should do it. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and Dan said, can you download a Facebook Live video and repurpose it in your blog or other social media platforms? Yes, that is huge, Dan. I'm so glad that you brought yeah. that up. You totally can. You can take, can I just jump in on this? Go ahead. Yeah, please do. I want it. Because I think this is such a great point that, yeah, you can do this Facebook Live video and then you can take that and you can repurpose it all over the place. You can put the video on YouTube and then take that link and put that in your blog. You can get it, it transcribed and, well, you don't need to trans transcribe it because you have the content already from PLR. But, you know, you can put, then take the word content and put that in your blog. So, like having, the original piece of content and being able to just blossom it out is huge, absolutely huge. And I'll give you a couple other thoughts on that. So um, if you're on a Mac, you can use a tool called Ecamm Live. So Ecamm Live is, it's like a one-time fee. I don't know what, you can take a look, just E-C-A-M-M, -M, so two M's, Ecamm Live. Uh, it's only Mac, it's, it's only on the Mac. There's probably PC stuff, but the reason I like that, and we, we're not using that today, and I'll tell you why, but Ecamm Live will record it on your computer so you get a full resolution video. It could, it'll could then broadcast to Facebook. I think you can possibly also broadcast to YouTube. Don't quote me on that. But what's cool about it is at the end, once the broadcast is over, you can there's a one-button press to upload it automatically to YouTube for you. Nice. So you don't even have to think. Like, it's done. And there's a lot of cool features with Ecamm, like adding overlays. You can add a countdown timer on the screen. You could actually play videos. So you could have like a pre-roll, like I have like a, a big introduction of you or watch something and analyze it together. Maybe you're watching, you know, a situation and like a case study and you're talking with people about it. You can do all that cool stuff. 
um, so play videos. You can have a guest on it, but it's a little bit tricky. That's why we're not using it um, because you have to go over Skype for that. And I'm a little bit leery of like blowing up my computer, having Skype open, the, you know, the camera's running and all that stuff. So right, right now we're using a service called Be Live. I think someone was asking about that, BeLive.tv. So you can take a look at that. Great for interviews. You can still add over some overlays, but it's limited because it's browser-based, not like computer-based. Ecamm can do a whole lot more. Um, and a couple other affirmatives to the live challenge. Audrey says, live stream challenge sounds good. Percy, he'll love this. He says, live challenge, fearfully, yes. <laughs> fearfully, yes. That's awesome. Um, and then John also is asking, how often do you create the videos and the live streams that you do? Yeah. So for me, it depends on what my goals are, whether I go and I do a live every day or whether I do it a couple times a week. Um, I find that the more often I do them, the more momentum I can gain. Mm -hmm. and so that's my best advice to you, John. If you're looking for when or how often you should do the videos, think of your end goal. If you have a goal that right. you want to really ramp up in the next 30 to 60 days, I would invite you to do a Facebook Live every day. If your goal is a little more out there and you have a goal of you know six months from now, um, you could get away with, I think, doing them twice a week. Yeah. Yep. And it, it's as, as often as you feel comfortable, as often as you feel confident, but I can tell you that the more you do it, the more you want to do it yeah. um, because you're going to see results. Like it's kind of a quick thing. Um, and I'll, I'll also chime in by saying that, so I'm, I'm consulting uh, a client who is a public speaker. He's launching a big parenting course and it's like a six module or six hour, like huge epic course about parenting. And one of the things that he's going to be doing now, he's, he's going to be doing lives for sure. But one of the other things is he's actually recording lots of videos for YouTube. And he, he actually has mapped out, this is going to sound nuts, but his, it, you know, for him, content creation is very easy. He just turns on the camera, he talks and he's done. Like it's so easy for him. And well, that's, that's, that's where you can get to the more often you get in front of the camera. Like you just feel more confident, more comfortable. Doesn't matter about mistakes. You just got to do it because that's you. You got to be real. People want to see the real you, not a robotic you. Um, but that only happens the more you do it. So anyway, here's what he did. He mapped out 52 videos. Then he's going to record them all in the, in the span of, I don't know how long, a week or two. And, you know, he'll change shirts and he'll change the scenery and all the stuff. Um, so it looks different, but he'll batch all of the recording all in one, uh, one go. And then you can upload that on a, on a schedule in YouTube. You can schedule out your, pre, your um, future videos. And same thing with Facebook. You can schedule out your, your Facebook videos. Now, the reason that I recommend this is the same reason why people binge watch on Netflix or YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you only have one video or three videos or five videos on YouTube, how can you binge watch that? Like you, you can't, right? So if someone re likes you and they really like you, they're gonna just keep, they're gonna subscribe. They're gonna look through your other videos and then they're gonna see, oh, there's, there's nothing. Like there's nothing to watch. And I don't want that for you. I want you to have lots of good stuff. If you're gonna do video, be there, be present and, and have stuff to binge watch. And especially in his niche with, with when it comes to parenting, you know, parents don't often have just one problem or one question. It's, you know, discipline related. It's my kid isn't eating. They're not behaving. You know, what do you do when there, there's a tantrum? Like you could just make a humongous list of all the parenting struggles and you end up binge watching. If you like it, you're going to binge watch it. Right. So that's a really excellent point. I, I totally agree. And I think there's like power in your journey too. So if you're someone who, who you're brand new to video and you're really nervous, it's okay to share, to share that and to say that yeah. people are going to resonate with you. They're, they're going to be inspired by you, empowered by you. So I think there's real power in your journey too. Yeah. And it's, it's all in practice. I mean, yeah, for sure. the more you do it, the better you, you're, the more comfortable you'll feel about it. Um, okay. So sorry. If you, if you don't like seeing your face while you do it, cause I know some, some of us don't just put a little post-it note over where your face is. And, and on the post it note, put a huge smiley face. Hi, right, there you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Linda came back. So um, she said she was talking about how trouble relating the content to her niche. I teach mental health professionals to start 
or level up their private practice. So in this case, we're talking about more business coaching essentially, or, or you know, coaching the coach. Um, so first thing that I would recommend is become an affiliate because you know you could then sell the PLR.me content to them and earn a commission. So we can talk about that. If you're interested, you can send an email to support at PLR.me. It's a closed affiliate program, but you know, maybe we could have you on board for that. So that's the first thing because obviously one way of leveling up in your business is to use content and they should just license the PLR.me content. That's the easiest, best, fastest way to do that. Um, now we do have some content in, in the library. If you look under the business and marketing category relating to, to business as well. And we're going to be adding some more business related content as we go as well. Um, but oftentimes, expanding or leveling up in the business, it, there's a lot of mindset stuff happening, a lot of confidence issues. You know, again, it could be confidence about getting on video or it could be just like not doing the things that you should be doing because you're you're overwhelmed, you're overstretched, you're, you're um, you know, there's this whole idea of stress and like that kind of thing. Because especially if you're um, a mental health professional, like you're, you're constantly like, the only way you can make money is by having clients. But if you constantly are having clients, you have no time to do the other things. So you can also talk about time management and other things relating to that. So those are a few ideas for you, Linda. Awesome. So uh, the other comment that um, I just wanted to post this, this was awesome. So Cynthia said, this just makes everything so simple and easy to use. I currently do all this myself. This will save so much time and effort because people are buying into you, not just the content. Thank you. That's awesome. It's so true. I mean, we have um, we have all this awesome training. We're here for you. We want to support you. We have all these awesome tools. And it's not just about the content. The content is like, is our, you know, tier one, it's the tree. And then we have all of these other tools and, and support and um, the training to help support you and help you grow. So Cynthia, thank you. That's awesome. Um, and then, yeah. So if there are any other comments or questions, please feel free to chime in. Uh, Jamie, any final thoughts or um, anything you'd like to share before we wrap up? You know, I just got to say, I just have to touch upon the training because the training I was really impressed by once I got in there and started going through things, there's a lot of videos and not just videos, but like super helpful videos. So <laughs> I say that. that is pretty cool. But awesome. yeah, mostly I just want to say thanks for having me on here. It's been super fun getting to connect with you and connect with everyone who joined us today. And yeah, definitely keep the questions coming because I'm sure we'll be checking in after the video too. Yeah, definitely. We'll be we'll keep a very close eye on the comments. So if you're watching this later on, we will be watching the comments. Any questions, please please feel free to ask away. Um, if you do want to have a live stream challenge, please comment below as well and um, check out the videos. There's a lot of great stuff. If you go to PLR.me and let me go, let me just show you real quick. Um, there's a little tab at the top. Hang on, I'm gonna share this in the broadcast. Uh, there's a little tab at the top that says learn and you will see awesome videos from Richard in there. You'll please go and watch those. Those are awesome. Um, content marketing training. So how to use affirmations and eBooks and use it in different ways, such as creating audio meditation program or, uh, you know, post posting content on your blog and emails. There's a lot of great stuff there. There's the content inspiration gallery, which are uh, case studies from, from you, like people who are, have created live retreats, um, created physical products, uh, free plus shipping offers, lead magnets and trip wires, and how they've used the done for you content and check out those um, case studies as well. And then we also have, I want to show you this as well, the, the resources. We have um, a weekly content schedule. So if you're not sure what to publish, you know, from day to day uh, that we've mapped it out for you, just follow and fill in the blanks. There's a, a coaching magazine template, so you can go ahead and create a magazine that you could print or um, offer up digitally every month or every quarter. Uh, there's also some other resources. This is an awesome one too, a fill in the blank webinar template. So if you're yeah. you're doing a webinar, you literally just have to fill in the blank. We have side by side the, um, like the fill in the blank version and then a filled in version as an example. So you know exactly what your webinar script would be like. So it's just completely done for you. And there's a fill in the blank headline template. So if you're writing headlines for your products or your blog posts, your emails, and then the step-by-step -step rewriting checklist, which 
gives you a great guide to take the content and then rework it, tweak it, and inject more you into it or remix it like a DJ. So lots of cool things that you can do there. So I wanted to point that out. Make sure you check out those resources. Yeah, super good stuff. Love it. Awesome. Well, hey, we're at the top of the hour. Thank you so much for joining us. Jamie, thank you so much for sharing all of your amazing wisdom and feedback and great ways of connecting things that I never would have thought of. So super cool. I really appreciate your time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time too. And it's been, it's really been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take care, folks. Bye.